Okay, in the previous video we saw that uh, uh, that diagram showing how, let's look at this for a second, again uh, showing how we can use uh, multiple components to uh, achieve uh, uh, dynamic registration and service discovery for a simple microservice architecture. Okay, so just once again quickly go through the Internet Gateway to an ELB ELB load balancing to Fabio, an HTTP router running on fixed ports, so that keeps the ELB happy. Fabio is building his, his routing table using uh, console information uh, going on the network. And so that uh, Fabio is going to uh, select uh, one of the portal services, the user facing service. And that user facing service is going to do two local DNS resolutions to get uh, access to a stock service and a weather service and it could be any of them since we have you know global distributed information managed by console right uh, okay so let's look at the application first so that's the portal page that you see and that page is building uh, uh, is being built using uh, the stock service and the weather service okay so we have three services total so let's look at stock information this is live information using the Yahoo uh, API uh, all right let's look at Google let's look at uh, uh, Apple okay so I'm calling you know I'm calling that service which in turns called the Yahoo API. Let's look at the weather. Paris, uh, not great. It's about yeah, it's 1 p.m. right now, so it's still chilly. Uh, let's look at uh, hey Tel Aviv. I was there not too long ago. Mm, this is nice, 22 degrees. Uh, let's look at uh, hey, let's look at Casablanca. 13 degrees. All right, you could play with this stuff all day. Actually, this is live on uh, of, on one of my domains, so demo.julian.org. Feel free to play with the app. You're not going to break anything, and it, it, it's on most of the time, you know. So happy to uh, let you guys play with this. Uh, how does that work? So let's take a quick look at the code, um, specifically at, at the portal. Um, it's a Ruby app. and so we have the, the the most interesting part is really this right so we need to look up uh, we need to look up uh, the weather service and the stock service and what do we see here well we create a DNS resolver and we resolve on the service name and uh, we get back that SRV record I mentioned in the previous video right and that's it so it's really standard DNS stuff uh, to uh, to discover your services right this is Ruby but it would happen uh, it would happen in a very similar way in different languages okay um, let's take a look at console now so that's the console GUI and what do I see here I see all the services running on uh, all the containers and the services running on the on the cluster so I've got three nodes so I see three copies of the ECS agent that makes sense I see three copies of the console agent on port 53 uh, I see three copies of Fabio's right so I have the service check and uh, the health check here. I see three copies of the portal, three copies of stock price, and three copies of weather, right? And so if I'm going to that ECS console again, I'm on a different cluster called service discovery, <coughs> and I see right I see my three services so each service is deployed as a separate container so I have a task defi definition for each of them 
And as you can see, I have three copies of each, right? In three instances. Okay. And so that's that's my setup. Um, so what else could we do, right? Uh, we could look at Fabio maybe logging on on one of the instances. So let's do that. So I'm logging in to one of my cluster instances. What is going on in there? Well, I see my three containers, right? The application containers. I see the registrator. I see the ECS, the ECS agent. I see the console agent. And Fabio uh, is not deployed as a container. I could have done it. Yes, I could have done that, but you know, for testing purposes, and uh, it was easier to just uh, deploy it manually. So, you know, blame me for uh, Fabio not being a container on this demo. But it is running there. Okay. And actually, I should be able to see some of the traffic here, right? Oops. Okay, so I, you know, you can see the console events. So not much going on right now. Uh, let's start more portals to see if uh, Fabio uh, gets that information. So I'm going to update the service definition and say, all right, now I want, let's say, six. Right. Keep in mind, we only have three instances. And I'm going to have six copies of portal running in an instant. All right. Go, ECS. Come on. Hey, is it lunchtime for ECS too? Yes, thanks. All right, so <coughs> I see those containers starting. All right, they're running, and what do I see here? I see Fabio automatically updating its configuration, right? Detecting the fact that, hey, um, a new portal container has started. So registrator grabbed that information, sent it to console, and Fabio gets it on the way. So I go from three, three to four, four to five, and five to six. So that's really, really super cool, I think. And that's uh, on wh why I think Fabio is nice. It's because really it's, n it's zero configuration, totally zero configuration. Okay, and so now I have six copies of, uh, uh, six copies of uh, portal, excuse me, to, to pick from when I'm load balancing. Okay, and of course I could do the same for the other services. Okay, so lots more stuff running here, and still, you know, some lots of room available on on both, you know, the CPU front and the memory front for those inst instances, and that brings me to uh, really the last part of the demo which is uh, how do you scale that, you know? Uh, and I'm going to show you how, uh, at least how to scale instances. Um, so what we're going to do now, we're, we're going to, mo to move to CloudWatch. And I'm going to show you some alarms. Actually, I'm going to show you the metrics first. So for ECS, you have four metrics available. CPU reservation, CPU utilization, memory reservation, memory utilization. So the reservation is about the information that you give in the compose file that we saw earlier, you know, the CPU shares and the, mam uh, the uh, max memory setting. So that's kind of a static value saying uh, how much, you know, CPU and, and memory uh, you, you, you give to a container, right? And so what I'm going to do here 
is I'm, I've, I've defined some alarms um, on which you can see here right for CPU uh, so I've got an alarm for when CPU the CPU reservation drops below 20% and one when CPU reserved goes beyond 75% and then the same for memory and uh, and so when that happens for a couple one or two minutes uh, I'm going to start some auto scaling actions so let's look at one of them for example let's look at memory reserved above 75 okay and so when memory reservation goes above 75 percent which it will in a moment I'm actually I'm going to start that immediately um, while I explain so let's say now I go totally insane and I want 200 copies of that little guy and how about uh, how about 500 of that one right <coughs> so the scheduler the ECS scheduler is going to do its job you know it's going to start to make me happy it's going to try to make me happy and uh, and start uh, as many tasks as possible but pretty quickly my three instances see it started already my three instances will be full right and uh, either on you know the CPU points will be exhausted or memory will be exhausted and that's I guess that's the case right now so I started way way too many uh, containers for the capacity of those three instances okay and so you know okay I've got 51 weather containers but I wanted 200 and uh, you know I'm not even it couldn't even start any stock price containers so that's not good you know I want 200 and 500 so my alarms here uh, my, those graphs are gonna you know are gonna shoot up normally within a within a minute or two and um, and actually both CPU me and memory will go above 75% and that's going to trigger auto scaling actions remember we saw that when an ECS cluster is uh, is created an auto scaling group is created automatically to manage the instances and so I'm going to send these uh, auto scaling actions to uh, I'm going to send those alarms to the auto scaling groups for auto scaling actions okay so I just want to see that graph shooting up yeah see here it's going to go vertically to <laughs> hundred percent and uh, and I think his uh, his little friend for CPU is going to do the same right do you have those on the dashboard here okay so going up right so it's going to the sky and um, this is going to send some alarms Okay. Pretty quickly. Okay, we just have to wait for one or two minutes. So while it does that, let me show you the auto scaling groups um, configuration. Okay, bear with me for a second. Okay, auto scaling groups. And actually, uh, we saw with the first cluster that we played with, you know, in the first demo, there was one auto scaling group. Uh, you know, uh, let's call it the let's say the default one. And we see that same thing here, right? Three instances, desire three, max three, etc. So I get three. But to make things a little more interesting, I added two more auto scaling groups. I added one, which I called on demand which goes from 0 to 10 maximum uh, and this one is adding uh, is adding 
instances at the uh, at the on demand price okay and I added a third one for spot instances uh, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with spot instances but basically to, to keep it simple uh, it's uh, instances that you can buy that you can that you can bid on right so it's a it's a bidding uh, it's a bidding process where you can get instances uh, for extremely low prices um, the only downside being that if the if the uh, the market price goes above your bidding price then you're going to lose your instances within two minutes so never you know should not only use spot instances that would be too dangerous but as you can see stacking multiple uh, auto scaling groups and multiple uh, instance categories like this you know it's it's a nice way to optimize your spend right on pay the on-demand price for you know a limited number of instances to guarantee capacity and then on top of that you know if you need more than that then you know it could be just a very short peak uh, and, and you don't want to pay the on-demand price for that and so you could use spot instances and this one can goes can go up to 70 instances and so the the cloud watch alarms that must be happening right now yes um, are going to send uh, alarms to see it goes we cross that threshold um, and here as well so within uh, uh, within a minute or two I should see some things happening in here let's look at the scaling policy okay so for okay so if uh, the alarm is triggered for more than two minutes I'm going to add two instances right so do I see that stuff already here is it two minutes already uh, yeah looks like it so let's just refresh that screen okay <coughs> so uh, as you can see I've got two on-demand instances which are which have been started and I'm asking for two spot instances so hopefully my price is right because if not I will never get them but at least you know I've got two on-demand instances starting so I should see them in the instance list and I will see them in the ECS console in a minute right okay so I see my on-demand instances are initializing and do I see some spot stuff happening here Mm, nope. <laughs> or is that the wrong name? No, no spot for now. Okay. So these these instances are uh, starting, and um, once they have properly initialized and joined the cluster, I'm going to see them right there, right? So for now, it's still three because they need to start up. So let's wait for them to do that. Oh, I see more stuff starting here, right? So, all right, auto scaling is going crazy. Good. That's exactly what we expect. Okay, memory is super high. CPU probably super high too. Okay, so as you can see, this is strictly, I mean, if you know EC2, this is strictly uh, EC2 stuff. But, uh, you know, again, it's, it's a nice way to, uh, to make sure that you have enough capacity on your ECS cluster to start your containers. All right. Okay, so now, yeah, I've got three on-demand instances starting and no spot. So maybe my uh, spot price is a little low for now. 
uh, and uh, and you know I'm not paying enough that's why they're not starting depends on you know time of day etc so let's see if yeah good news right I have five instances in my cluster now here but you know bad news is they're going to be exhausted super fast because you know I asked for so much uh, so many uh, containers here that you know they're going to be full in no time and so once again auto scaling is going to uh, you know uh, or CloudWatch at least is going to detect that uh, that alarm you know that my uh, uh, that actually you know CPU and memory are still not below the threshold so it will keep triggering auto scaling events right and you know that's that's how you do it uh, that's how you do it uh, and uh, right all right 93 tasks running and if we wait for some more time you know eventually <laughs> we will get to whatever I asked for okay all right uh, we don't want to wait for those uh, hundreds and hundreds of containers to start but you get you get the point and uh, and you know I think that's that's a nice and easy way to make sure we have capacity all right okay well that concludes this super long presentation I hope you liked it uh, you can get all the slides from SlideShare. I will put the link in the video definition. Um, I'm happy to hear your feedback on uh, on this presentation. So please feel free to contact me by email or on Twitter. And uh, you know, hopefully you like that. Uh, I wasn't intending to uh, to record that, but. Uh, many 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 people asked for it and uh, couldn't attend either the 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 all the meetups the all the docker meetups that I did in France or or some of the the other events so there you go guys strictly for you and uh, you know have fun with uh, docker and ECS and please let me know how you're doing okay well till next time